Welcome back, Hot Wheels collectors and racers. We have the H Case 2024 unboxing. We unbox the car. The unboxing is our qualifying round. We um we open up two cars at a time, show them to you, and then they race off to make the bracket. First up, we have the Honda Civic Si, white with carbon fiber hood, and the Dragon Blaster. Dragon Blaster in the close lane, Civic Si on the far lane. That lane order is all random based on how they're pulled out of the case here, folks. The Dragon Blaster over the jump takes the inside on the Civic. The Civic is fast, but the Dragon Blaster is just flying away. No pun intended with those wings there. Dragon Blaster takes that race and will move on and take his spot in the bracket. We have the Rockin' Railer racing the Batman Knight Batmobile. Rock and Railer jiggling. Oh, he go out. He's out of there. That engine was jiggling so hard that he flew off the track. Batman will move on as long as he can finish this track. He is not very fast, but I'm Batman. But he will finish and he'll move on. Why is that bin sitting on the room? Someone tell the producers we need to reshoot this event. We have the Purple Passion racing against the Heavy Hitcher. This is a nice blue medley. We have a sun flare coming in from the skylights in the room, adding a nice sunlit glow on this track. The heavy hitcher out front. He looks like he will take it. But unfortunately, he spins out, and the Purple Passion, I'm not sure why it's called Purple Passion. It is a blue car. He takes the win, and he will move on. Oh, the heavy hitcher somehow made it. Next up, we have the Porsche 911 Carrera RS 2.7 in red racing against the El Segundo Coupe. Porsche, Porsche out front early. El Segundo takes the inside because he has the inside lane advantage on lane number one, or turn number one. The Porsche has an advantage on lane number two, and then they even out as they go over the jump, but the Porsche was faster, and he will move on. Everyone knows red cars are faster than blue. We have the yellow convertible Corvette C6 versus the 1963 Studebaker Champ. Studebaker close to us, the Corvette in the far lane, Corvette half car head going in turn one. Studebaker take, oh, Corvette is right back and he has the insulated advantage. Down over the jump he goes, soaring, lands it smooth and he is out of there folks. You hear that V8 rumble, actually you hear nothing because there is no car audio. These are, there's no engine. All right, we got the Merc versus the Group C Fantasy. Because this is a rally track because of jump, this Group C Fantasy should do well. Uh, we shall see. He is out front, the Merc falling back really fast. Perfect, I don't, maybe that's the fastest way to go through that jump is nose first, that way you get those tires back on the ground and cross the finish line for first place. All right, who do we have next? Oh, the Merc does does finish it just really very slow the fiat 500e in blue number five versus the gmc hummer ev in purple that is a beautiful recolor on that hummer ev but will he have enough to take on the fiat he is out front the fiat pulls ahead and it's not looking so good for the hummer the fiat over the jump lands it smooth slides sideways spins around just to see the hummer sliding on his hood the fiat will take this one across the finish line in reverse and move on to round one bracket. Nissan Skyline R30, Army Green, we've seen that one in the last case as well, versus the 55 Chevy Bel Air Gasser. That car has a little bit of a high center of gravity. Will he be able to keep it on the track? That R30 is just struggling back there. We'd like to see those Skylines do a little better, but you know what, they're a little overrated, so he can stay back there. This 55 Chevy Gasser just motoring down the track and we'll take the win. Someone needs to put that bin away. Please put that bin away. I don't even know what I got out of that bin. Minecraft car versus the 76 Greenwood Corvette. And we have Peach driving the Minecraft car because, you know, someone has to be the driver. The Greenwood Corvette takes the inside and is ahead. It is even into the, down, into the dip over the jump. Peach slides sideways, almost had the Greenwood Corvette, but blew it. Peach, I don't know who was driving that one, the Minecraft block or Peach, but somebody, there was no communication there between the two drivers and they blew it. 
Glory Chaser with the number 32 in the side. I love that like matte elephant gray on that color versus the Mazda RX MX-5 Miata that reminds me of a Reese's Cup. I don't know why, but I think of Reese's Cups when I see that cup. The colors, mostly. Miata out front over the jump. Huge crash. Glory Chaser is out front. Will the Miata be able to come back? The Miata in reverse comes back. That is a huge save after almost tanking it, crashing over that jump, but he will move on as he rolls back into the frame there. Next up, we got the Hot Wheeler. That's Hot Wheeler. Versus the Volkswagen T2 pickup that folks, we all know, does not handle the track very well. Hot Wheeler, though, has some moving parts, special features there. He's munching his way down the track and over the jump, grabbing at that air with his jaws. And he is looking good, even though he's not that fast. He's holding steady, holding straight, and he will beat that Volkswagen T2 pickup. Next up, we have the Speed Dozer. Racing against the 72 Stingray Corvette in red. You think that Dozer would win it hands down with those big back tires and that large, heavy body, but the agility of that Corvette and the wind blowing through the hair of the driver that doesn't exist, the Dozer's off the track. Corvette spins around for a drift turn over drift, but still takes the win and moves on to the bracket. Then we got the Ford F-150 Lightning Custom racing against the tuned Mazda RX-3. We'll see how the tuned short wheelbase pays off for him here. So far, he's kind of rattling back and forth between the track barriers, and it's costing him some speed, folks. That F-150, a light jump over that, getting his tires back on the track as soon as possible, and that EV power. Is it EV? Is that an EV truck? Heading down the track. And there's the Mazda across the finish line. I'm not yawning, I promise. The West Coast Flyer, it looks like a locomotive. He's got to be fast versus the 64 Chevy Chevelle SS. The Chevelle starts off at a little bit of a sideways angle there. I don't know if that's going to pay off for him. He is behind after turn one and very far behind after turn two. That West Coast Flyer is absolutely flying, heading down the tra tra train tracks like a train track truck. How much trucks for a train track truck will truck 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 train? Say that 10 times fast. You got the Donut Drifter versus the Braille Twin Mill. We've seen this Braille Twin Mill before. We know it is fast, but I've never seen a donut on the track. We shall see how the donut plays out. I do not know if he's gonna win, but I am thinking I'm trying to come up with puns with donuts, but it's not coming out as good as I would like it, but the donut is fast, and the Twin Mill gets second. The donut will move on. This one, we got the wheeled chair, wheelie chair versus Proper chopper with no wheels, no tires. This is not going to work out well for them. The wheelie chair flips over in the first turn. This race is such a, so catastrophic, folks. We ran that race a bunch of times, and they both DNF every single time. So neither of them qualified, and they they're not they don't move on. We got the coot in the coast lane in the 52, 52, 62 Chevy. One of those two. Chevy step side who will be, by default, moving on because his competitor, his opponent, flew off the track and is done. So folks, this isn't stage. This is real racing. Whatever happens to these cars, happens to these cars. Whoever wins the race moves on no matter what, no matter if he clips a crack in the track, flies off the track, spins out, gets stuck in the track. It happens. That's racing, folks. Just like that. Dodge D100 rolls over, and the rapid pulse, rapid pulse, rapid response, pulse, rapid pulse response. We've seen that in the last case as well. Moves on. This is a beautiful car as a Porsche collector. I am loving this 904. Racing against the Roland Solo. The Roland Solo has the aerodynamics that Porsche is fast, is a classic in the Porsche world, but I don't know if he's going to have it against this fantasy car. Those, they build these fantasy cars like a dream come true. Like a fantasy almost. Imagine that. And they're fast. They're fast. I give it to Mattel. They build some fast fantasy cars and push those up. With the Hot Wheels Ultimate T-Rex Transporter. He's racing against the Jaguar. Look. 
one, Mark one. Jaguar in the coast lane. Hot Wheels T-Rex in the far lane. That T-Rex could be fast. It is heavy. As long as he can keep on the track, he might have a chance. Over the jump they go, and the Jaguar cuts left and cuts off the T-Rex transformer, transporter. But that thing's fast. I told you it's a late game. Coming in late, but not enough with the weight. Jaguar moves on. We have the Hot Wheels 450F versus the 2019 Ford Ranger Raptor. And because we all know the dirt bike will not make it down the track on its own, we decided to take it upon ourselves and put it in the back of the truck to see if that would make a difference. But folks, uh, it clearly fell out of the truck. And this Ranger will move on as long as he can complete this lap. I'm hoping that F450, or F, I don't know, yeah, I don't know if it's F450, F450. I'm hoping that 450F, I'm not dyslexic, does not appear in the next case because it's not this, doesn't do well in the case races. We got the Jeep versus the McLaren Solus. I have a feeling there's this one of these opponents has a higher center of gravity than the other, and it's not going to work out well for them as we just saw there in turn one. The Jeep flies on the track. McLaren Solus clips something in the turn, barely makes it over the jump, but he's making his way down the track. Folks, that is the slowest hypercar I've ever seen in my life. We have the reigning champion of the last case, the BMW M3 wagon that appears in the H case as well, versus the Road Bandit. I'm not really sure that Road Band. Is there a band? Is there a band in there on the road? I'll have to look inside of it. Can we see inside? Either way, the BMW wagon is putting on a clinic out there again. Huge jump, landing a little nose heavy, bouncing up, but that doesn't slow him down. He's making his way downtown. Make the way downtown. He will move on to round one and almost blocks his teammate again and gets an extra bonus point that doesn't really exist, but we like to call it a bonus point. Anyways, we have the Humvee as we saw in the last case. And we have a super treasure hunt, folks. The Volvo Gasser. That car, unfortunately, will not be getting ripped open and racing because we know the real rider does not do well on this track. We have the Hummer racing the Chevy Tahoe. Tahoe takes the inside because he's in the inside lane, and now he takes the outside because he's in the outside lane. Down over the jump he goes, and that Hummer is not looking good. Hummer is still coming, but he's a little slow. I'm, I don't see him there. That Tahoe spins back around. Taking his good old time. He's got nowhere to be, nowhere to be fast. He wins it. Audi 90 Quattro, wide wheelbase, wide body. He has no competitor. He's a, is an odd number in the case. This guy gets a buy. He will move on as long as he can make that Audi 90 all the way down the track, across the finish line. And it looks like he might nice and slow and steady. I wouldn't say slow and steady. It's a rapid pace, but not that fast. We'll see how he does. And we wish you the best luck in this bracket. There's your matchups, folks. We have the Dragon Blaster. Dragon Blaster? I gotta try to remember these car castings names. Dragon Blaster with those wings in the far lane. The Batmobile in the close lane. The Dragon Blaster flying again. Man, I can't stop th thinking about flying because he has wings and it's a pun and I'm very punny, you know? Either way, it looks like Dragon Blaster is gonna walk away with this one, folks. But the Batmobile is right behind. The Dragon Blaster sideways. The Batmobile strikes the Dragon Blaster and pushes him across the finish line. That was almost catastrophic for the Dragon Blaster, but he does move on. Porsche in the close lane, beautiful red Carrera RS versus the Purple Passion, the blue car, let's call it Purple Passion. I'm gonna call this the Red Ripper. We got Purple Passion in the back and the Red Ripper in the front. Purple Passion pushing on the Red Ripper. The Red Ripper, Porsche, takes the race and moves on. Group C Fantasy in the close lane. And then we have the 07, 07, G C6, I don't know what year it is. The C6 Corvette in yellow, the convertible. Group C Fantasy over the jump. I'm telling you, that Fantasy Group C rally car gains so much speed in that jump section because that is what he's built for. He moves on. 55 Chevy gas in the close lane. Fiat 500E in the far lane. That Fiat is quick. Or that gas was slow. Which one is it? Let me know in the comments. Is it Fiat quick or is it gas or slow? Folks, I hope you've been following along with your favorite car and rooting it on. And I want you to tell me in the comments who was your pick at the beginning? And did you change your pick after your pick got eliminated? Or did you pick the winner? Tell me if you picked the winner. We had the Reese's Pieces, the Mazda MX-5 
flying over the jump. That wing stabilizes him as he lands perfectly. The Greenwood Corvette not even in the picture. The Mazda will be a force to be reckoned with. He sets down one of the fastest lap times. We don't have time for this lap. We just done this track. Just kidding. Hot Wheeler, Hot Wheeler, in the far lane, munching his weight on the track. Getting close to the Corvette, but the Corvette gets huge air. Hot Wheeler eating in his bumper, eats his way right by the Corvette, pushes his way by, nibbles on his bumper, and then rips him out of the way. He takes the win and moves on. Folks, I can tell you I did not see that coming. But that Hot Wheeler is cruising. Speaking of cruising, we have the West Coast Flyer who was cruising in his qualifying match. But the F-150 is fast. But I don't know if he's fast enough. West Coast Flyer, you can't stop a locomotive. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be a train. And he will take that race and move on. And then there's some rubbing and racing after the race at the finish line. We got the Chevy step side in the close lane. We got the donut in the far lane. The donut is fast. That front fascia is curved up just slightly, so he's able to get that downforce he needs, but still clear the jumps without any rubbing action. And folks, everyone knows donuts are fast. If you don't know that, you're a ding dong. All right, we got the rapid pulse, and I forgot the name of this uh, riding solo, riding solo, something like that. Riding solo is, whoa, it, extra speedy jump. The editors forgot to slow down that footage of the jump, so you saw that jump in real time, folks. It was really fast, and the rapid pulse moves on. Ranger wrapped in the close lane. Jaguar Mk1, Mark 1, <laughs> Mk1. Jaguar fast on the inside, and over the jump he goes. The Ranger tries to pass on the inside after the jump, but gets denied by the Jaguar. Jaguar moves on to the next round. Reigning champion, the BMW M3 wagon. And we saw that Solus and the McLaren Solus in the last race. He was not very fast. He barely made it down the track. I think the announcer made the comment that it was the slowest hypercar he's ever seen in his life. And I have to agree with that, even though that was me five minutes ago when I said that. BMW M3 wagon. That thing is cute as can be. Moves on. Audi 90 in the coast lane. The Chevy Tahoe in the far lane. The Chevy Tahoe looking good, looking a lot faster than he did in his qualifying run. And he will be, looks like he will be illuminating that Audi 90. See you later. Alligator. Here's round two. There's your matchups. We have the Dragon Flyer, Dragon Blaster, Dragon Blazer versus the Porsche 911. Carrera RS. That Carrera just got a massive amount of air and its stock suspension wasn't built for it. He lands and flips over. Dragon Blaster will take the victory and move on. I think the semifinals is next. 500E or the quarterfinals. I don't know. Versus the Group C Fantasy. 500E has been very fast, but the Group C Fantasy look good. Watch his front end over this jump. Oh, geez, I did not expect that. He did not land smooth, and as a result, he got up on the median, I mean, on the curb, and almost cost him the race, but he threw it in reverse and still beat the Fiat 500E. Here's the Hot Wilder versus the Reese's Cup. The Reese's Cup is fast. The Dragon, the Dragon Wilder, the Hot Wilder, Dragon Blaster Wilder, Dragon Wilder Blaster. It doesn't matter what the name is. The Miata is going to win and move on to the next round. And folks, I can tell you, I'm rooting for that Miata. He's looking fast. We have a donut, which is very fast as well. West Coast Flyer. That donut has been fast, folks, but we, this just goes to show how fast that West Coast Flyer is. Landing that jump with perfection and darting down the track. I, is this? It looks like this video is fast forwarded, but that car is just that fast. And he does get the extra bonus point, folks, for blocking his opponent from crossing the finish line, that bonus point goes towards absolutely nothing. Jaguar MK1 in the close lane. Rapid pulse, rapid response, pulse, pulse response. Over the jump he goes, lands it smoothish, and I do not see the Jaguar anywhere in the back. Looks like the rapid pulse will move on. I did not see the Jaguar. We didn't give him time to finish. Chevy Tahoe versus the reigning champion, the BMW M3 Wagon. M3 Wagon looks like he will take this one. 
Yes, as he does. Whoa, 50-50 grind around the turn and spins around and he does not stick the landing, folks. The Tahoe takes the outside and the Tahoe knocks out the reigning champion, the BMW M3 Wagoon. Here's the semifinals. The top two will race, the middle two will race, and the bottom two will race. And then we'll have a three car finals. Dragon Blaster on the outside. West Coast Flyer on the inside. Dragon Blaster has been fast. He's still fast. If he didn't race, probably one of the fastest vehicles, West Coast Flyer, he might have advanced to the finals. But nope, the West Coast Flyer is undefeated at this moment in time. Everyone in this tournament right now is undefeated if you're seeing them. So that stat doesn't even matter. Group C Fantasy will follow watching over that jump. He lands smooth again. Man, that is a beautiful rally car. The Rapid Pulse on his tail. Rapid Pulse tries to take the inside but gets denied access to the inside. Spins out. Group C Fantasy wins it. Chevy Tahoe versus the Miata. The Miata is, is almost passing him on the outside of lane number one. But by lane number, by lane, by turn number two, he is out front by a lot. But the Tahoe pushing on him. The Tahoe can get by. He cannot get by. And the Miata takes the win and earns his spot in the finals. We have the West Coast Flyer. We have the Group C Fantasy. And we have the Mazda MX-5. They will start in these positions and rotate one position clockwise. First place gets three points. Second place gets two points. Third place gets one point. If you DNF. Oh my gosh, that West Coast Flyer. Literally, we're going to do a slow motion replay for the first time in case race history. He jumps over that car in the air and makes his way downtown and almost passes, almost passes the Group C Fantasy, folks. That is the craziest maneuver I've ever seen in this track's history. And what I was saying, if you get a DNF, you get zero points. First three, second two, third one, DNF zero. West Coast Fire, as expected, putting on a crazy, crazy show here for you. But those two are fast. Don't leave them out of it. They cross the finish line. One, two, three, back to back to back. They rotate one more spot. West Coast Fire in the pole position. He should walk away with this one. We shall see. The Group C Fantasy takes the inside. And the West Coast Flyer spins out. And the Miata's on his hood. Groopsy Fantasy is the only one on the track and will collect three points. What does this mean for the score? West Coast Flyer still puts two points on the board. And folks, we have a tie. We line them up. Groopsy Fantasy in the close lane. West Coast Flyer in the far lane. This is the tiebreaker. It's a one and done situation. Whoever wins this race wins it all. Groopsy Fantasy tries to take the inside. The West Coast Flyer up on two wheels but is able to hold off Group C Fantasy. Group C Fantasy tries to take the inside again, but the West Coast Flyer holds him off and takes the victory in the H Case race in 2024 Hot Wheels style. Congratulations, West Coast Flyer. Thank you, everybody, for watching the Tiny Track Cars unboxing and case race. We'll see you in the next one. Be sure to subscribe and follow along for all the case races.